A good woman is hard to find. And also, I will be doing a movie review today. Uh, I'm sure no one's made that joke who's reviewed this movie. No one! Well, A Good Woman is Hard to Find is a 2019 crime drama thriller by way of Belgium and England by director Abner Pastel, who previously brought us the film Road Games, and it features a breakout role from Sarah Bolger as Sarah, a housewife whose husband was recently killed in a gang-related murder, and now she has to look after her two kids, and the police haven't really done much to uncover who the murderer is, so she has to exact revenge on her own terms while still picking up the pieces of her life. But then there's this guy named Tito who robs the two cronies who work for the guy who killed her husband and then he's selling those drugs out of her house. She kind of keeps letting him in because she wants to get information from him to find out who murdered her husband. She's struggling to get by financially. She has a fledging relationship with her mother and her son is mute after witnessing the actual murder of his father. So she's juggling all these things. Hey, at least it's not Oh no, I just lost my job today and the rent is past due. And also, this is another movie where a protagonist yields a hammer to exact revenge. Kind of like Old Boy or You Were Never Really Here. But luckily, Miss Bolger really elevates the material. And so we get a nice duality of her trying to redeem herself through the eyes of those around her, while at the same time, she's trying to stick up for herself more and more. And who doesn't love a babe kicking ass? Notice how I'm loosening up by taking the G off the end of that word. So the movie takes place in Northern Ireland and it really feels like a character in itself. And it also means that you're gonna hear a lot of the C word, candy. There's this real overpowering sense of monotony and dread and poverty. And you can just kind of feel accusatory eyes on her at all times. Everything is just so gray and plain, which is why especially the final showdown at the boss's club with all the neon lights feels like a real transformation for her character visually. And obviously I'm not gonna try to speak for what is or isn't female empowerment or feminist cinema, but I feel like a story like this is endlessly more interesting than a Hallmark movie where it's a little bit more nuanced and it's like, yeah, she, now believes in herself more and she has more of an identity now, but it comes at the cost of being a crazy person who murders people. I felt like one of the only weak links in the movie was the mob boss, let's just call him Irish Victor Spinetti. He's not as intimidating as I was hoping he would come off as. His introductory scene is just him kind of being mildly annoyed that the cronies came back to his club and there's a scene where he's advancing on Sarah and the kids, but he kind of walks up to them like a badass. And his quirk is that he's very obsessed with grammar and language, which is one of the only things that didn't really get set up and paid off in this movie, where, where a lot of things do get set up and paid off. There are a few moments in the movie where it was almost literally hitting you over the head. She's talking to a counselor, she's talking to the cops, and they're saying, hey, did anything happen here? And it's cross-cutting between her going, no, and then footage of her chopping up a body in slow motion. Early on into the movie, there's some flashy camera work, which to me kind of distracts from the narrative unfolding. I feel like it was put in there in order to draw viewers in. But to the movie's credit, nearly everything that's set up pays off. Everything small and big, from the nosy grocery store worker to her reading the stories to her kids, to even little bits of dialogue, even a shot early on of someone cutting up meat. One could argue that certain aspects of the movie are underwritten, but I feel like it's simplicity that really helps the movie move along. The music carries a lot of tension, but it only really creeps in when it's needed. And we don't know that much about Sarah's backstory, but that kind of reflects her role in society as being this kind of transparent, invisible woman. Or as the last line of dialogue would suggest, would it matter? But would it matter? But yeah guys, all in all, I really enjoyed this. It's got a lot of personality and atmosphere and crossover appeal, and it was all shot in 16 freaking days. It's never really looking down on the characters. You even get a bit of humanity from the guy who's breaking into her house. That is until he tries to sexually assault her. But yeah, this movie seems to have finally been put through the streaming services or been available as VOD in the States only less than a week ago from when I'm shooting this. So I hope it becomes a cult hit over here. I hope uh, people check this out. Definitely a recommendation for me. And also, if you want to see something like this, I would recommend 
maybe like Straw Dogs was an influence on this or something more recent like the one I mentioned before, You Were Never Really Here. Great performance from Sarah Bolger and I am interested in seeing what this director does next. If you'll excuse me, I've got a date with the night. Stay sexy.